Russell Westbrook was finally traded, following a horrible spell for the player and the Lakers franchise. But does it justify the criticism that he's been receiving? I mean, come on. Westbrook was actually called a vampire by ESPN's Dave McMenamin. As it happens in every sport, once a player retires or leaves a franchise, more insider news about their relationship emerges. One could argue that the Westbrook Lakers relationship had been on thin ice since he completed his move to the Los Angeles but Dave McMenamin went all out. ESPN's insider McMenamin revealed that he had the latest from his sources about the Westbrook exit, and it wasn't pretty. Talking on TV, he discussed the trade that sent Westbrook to Utah and got the Lakers' D'Angelo Russell in return, and elaborated that a source had told him that the Lakers were more than happy to let Westbrook leave. In fact, Russ was labeled something of a vampire during his stay in Los Angeles, with McMenamin saying Westbrook sucked the blood out and said that the former MVP winner was actually thought of as a vampire in the dressing room by the Lakers. Now, I don't know just how true and well-placed McMenamin's sources are, but it does sound a bit too disrespectful, doesn't it? He is a turnover machine. He has low basketball IQ. He is the flip side of LeBron. Who I'm not one to say that Westbrook was ever seen as a good signing by the Lakers, and it definitely wasn't an experiment that worked. It was doomed from the beginning, but calling him a vampire isn't justified at all. I mean, think about it. We're talking about a former MVP winner, and I don't think I need to explain the kind of respect that other MVP winners tend to receive. For instance, look at the amount of respect that Giannis or Jokic get. Or, okay, a better comparison would be some winner from the 2010s. Let's not even get to LeBron or Steph. But how do you explain the amount of respect that Kevin Durant and James Harden receive? They're all MVP winners, and it's absurd. Yes, KD and Harden have often been criticized, especially with the way they left Oklahoma City and Houston, respectively, but never like the way Westbrook is hated upon in the media. Any casual who didn't see Russ play before his time in Los Angeles Coming up on two minutes. Cutting Russ might be led to believe that he isn't a good player, which is absolutely bonkers. It's insane the kind of spin the media can put on a player, and it's so very unfair. The Lakers should definitely be ashamed as a franchise for letting such news out, and also for the kind of treatment that Russ had to deal with. Again, I'm not defending his time in LA. It was horrific, yes, and it just never seemed like a good fit. Yeah, the Lakers' Russ never seemed like a project that'd work out, and it definitely didn't, especially now that we look at it in hindsight. The Lakers needed someone who wasn't as dominant on the ball and could shoot those shots from beyond the arc. Right now we're just trying to compete. I think that the rest of the stuff kind of just got to figure out, you know, we're on a lot of new guys. Unfortunately, Russ wasn't good enough to do either of those things. The Lakers struggled big time last season, and not making the playoffs with that big three was a big problem. Somehow, after a year of having Westbrook around, the Lakers only got worse. It's been another poor campaign for the Los Angeles side, and they're currently struggling to get out of the 13th place position. It doesn't really matter for me either way. Um, I like to say even kill, um, stay confident and, and believing in. Which is only better than the two extremely underperforming sides, the Spurs and the Rockets. But my point still stands, the hate that Westbrook received was completely unjustified, especially considering the fact that he did try to make it work in LA. Even though it wasn't his fault that the Lakers paid that much amount on a player who was never going to be a good fit for that team, Westbrook accepted accepted his role as the sixth man, would a so-called vampire do that? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that Russ wasn't at fault. Of course, you could see his mentality. Uh, the ball, I can rebound the ball, I can defend. Um, I can do every aspect of the game, and I take pride in that every single night. Like openly saying, let's just have fun, when LeBron's delivering a cold-blooded speech about winning, yes, I get it, it's a meme now. I just want to say, um... Yo, thank you to the Laker faithful. Um, you guys are one of a kind. But in the grand context of things, it matters too. Still, how many MVPs have you seen accepting a role as a sixth man? And not only accepting it, but excelling in it. No other player made a bigger contribution from that role this season than Westbrook. And given the fact the Lakers had more than half a season with that team, it was almost stupid to change the entire starting 11 and take Westbrook out too, especially when you're that far off the playoffs 
off or play in spots. Uh, it's a big win for us, man, especially coming off a long road trip. Big home win against a great team, and tonight we show some grit. Not to mention, Westbrook was finally embracing and producing valuable performances in that role. If anything, it was the shortcomings of Darvin Ham to run plays through Westbrook in the clutch rather than giving the rock to LeBron. So, yes, it may not have worked out, but labeling a former MVP and a future Hall of Famer as a vampire was absolutely unacceptable, especially when you take a look at how this tends to impact the lives of these players. How about you personally? How would you assess your game tonight? Um, solid. Yeah, solid. I'm not going to preach against criticized players because we've all done that in the heat of the moment, but it would be nice to revisit the fact that these players are also humans at the end of the day. They do have families and they do get affected by such remarks. Just as Westbrook's wife pointed out how tough that vampire comment has made life for her and her family, Nina Westbrook was absolutely furious with McMenamin, and rightfully so. She called out the NBA insider and explained how sick it was of ES ESPN to say that. She pointed out how this is all slander and explained how it couldn't be further away from the truth. Just making sure I'm prepared mentally and physically for whatever comes my way, and that's pretty much it, whatever. Nina also had to explain to ESPN how such comments make life hard for players and their families by saying that her children are of school-going age and they have to listen to their peers repeat those things. You know what, man? I'm, I'm super blessed and, and, and leaning a lot on my faith. And she's absolutely spot on. No child should ever have to go through that, let alone a child of someone who was a nine-time All-Star and former MVP winner. Unfortunately, she added that she'll have to prepare herself to explain how that's not the case to her children. That's not only unacceptable, but also so, so wrong. It's actually Westbrook's greatness that he hasn't called out ESPN, which, let's be honest, is only doing it for the attention, like Nina Westbrook also pointed out. At the same time, I hope Westbrook finds more love than he got from the Lakers wherever he ends up next. Kind of can feel like you're getting close. You have nine or ten assists, points and stuff, rebounds. As the 30-year-old is in talks with multiple franchises. Yeah, the likes of the Chicago Bulls and Miami Heat have already sounded out Westbrook over a move, with Utah Jazz also offering him a chance to play the remainder of the season in Salt Lake City. It's 50-50 balls. Um, it's an important part of the game that don't show up in the stat sheet, but something that. Not to mention, the Lakers' city rivals, the Clippers, have also expressed interest in acquiring Westbrook, and that would be a proper revenge story, given the Clippers' insane recent winning record against the Lakers. Ups and downs, and without his grace and his, his blessing, I wouldn't be able to be here. It would be nice for Russ to get one over his former team in Crypto.com Arena, although a recent rumor suggests that Russ might not be too keen on signing with the Clippers because both franchises share the arena. Either way, wherever Russ ends up, I'm hoping he can kickstart the remainder of his career. I feel great. I mean, honestly, for me, I feel great. I'm just happy to be on the floor to compete. <laughs> and ended on a high, because he is a great player and definitely no vampire. That's all I have for today. See you next time. Uh, that meaning uh, vampire sucks the, the blood out of the locker room. Um, Russell Westbrook moves on. I'm feeling all right. I'm okay. I'm bad.